Hey guys, welcome back to the homestead. So today I rented a skid steer. I've never drove a skid steer before, so this is gonna be a learning experience for me. Um, but I'm gonna use it to try to work on our equipment uh, parking area that we're trying to set up here. So we've got this old concrete pad where a house used to be, and then we're gonna put gravel from here out to the driveway and just make this whole big area somewhere where we can park all our farm equipment and implements and stuff. So. Uh, yeah, I ended up renting a skid steer because there was so much metal in the ground up here uh, around the, the front of this house that I would probably pop a tractor tire. I didn't want to damage a tractor tire. So I ended up renting a skid steer. It cost me about $225 for the day for the, the skid steer and a trailer. Um, so hopefully I can use that today. We're going to clear out everything, get this whole area cleaned up. And then I've got three truckloads of gravel back here that we're going to spread out and uh, hopefully when we're done today we have this nice big area where we can park our equipment and then later we'll come back and we're going to move a really big carport and set it uh, and anchor it to this concrete pad and make like a little barn here as well but uh yeah hopefully by the end of the day we have a nice big parking area and uh, this is all looking a lot better
Well, I think I've got the uh, area all prepped and ready for me to start putting these loads of gravel down, get it all spread out and make my parking area. Um, so uh, when I came in here, I came in here and kind of took the top layer of dirt off trying to look for metal in the ground because this place was full of metal. And we found a bunch over there and put it on the, uh, the metal pile. And then um, we ended up having some concrete slabs and, and pieces of concrete. Uh, I use those to kind of help fill that area back in so I don't have to use as much gravel to kind of come up to the level of that concrete pad because it was kind of low over there. And then all that dirt that I took off the top that was full of grass and weeds and then that ash pile that was sitting back here, we kind of took all that and pushed that back there off the back corner of that of this concrete pad. There's about a 12 inch drop off back there. So um, there's a big area that was low that I could use it to fill it in with. And then it's, we'll be able to still cover that up with about six inches of rock and it'll be buried under there where it won't be a problem. And uh, I really don't plan on driving back there anyway. So um, I think that's the best thing to do, easiest thing to do to just kind of get that stuff out of the way and use it to fill in a low spot. But uh, you know, this is my first time using a skid steer and I'm sure it didn't look like I knew what I was doing at all um, because I don't. Um, it's gonna take a while to kind of learn the finesse of that machine, I think. Um, very jerky, um, very easy to go over steer left or right. And uh, yeah, I could I could really only run it at about like a quarter speed or something. Um, just because you get, you rev it up too much, it's so jerky, it's just hurting my back. Um, but uh, maybe, uh, maybe next time, if I rent one again, I'll get better and better at it. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and start spreading this gravel out and uh, start making this parking area. So I've got all that gravel spread out now using the skid steer and um, three loads was barely enough gravel to, to get the front of this covered. Uh, definitely could have bought one more load. Um, that was probably 45 tons worth of rock. I'd say probably average 15 tons a load. Um, so uh, I may have to come back later and add more rock once this settles, but I didn't have any rock 
uh, for the back side of the concrete pad where I'd put all that dirt and ash. Um, but over by the compost bin I had a big dirt pile that, I had, that I'd had sitting there for a while. So I picked up that dirt pile and put it on top of all that dirt and ash and then packed it down. So that's probably going to cover it good enough. And like I said, I don't really plan on uh, you know, driving back there or anything. But uh, I think what I got is good enough for now. And the rental is pretty much due on the skid steer here in about an hour or so. So I've got to get it loaded up and taken back to the rental place. So once I get back, we'll start parking equipment and start kind of seeing how we can get everything arranged here. So probably the number one reason why I wanted to create that new gravel parking area over there for our implements is because, you know, I'm tired of them sitting out here in the grass and then every couple months when the grass gets tall enough, I got to hitch up to every one of them, move them around so I can mow under them. So it's like a game of musical chairs where all the equipment's on that end and then it ends up in the middle and then it ends up over here. And I'm just sick of having to move all this equipment around. And uh, the other reason is because, you know, I just reseeded this area last fall and I want to fence this in here and make this pasture for animals. So um, if we're going to fence this in, I need to find a new place for these anyway. So they needed their own place to sit and that parking area is going to, you know, make that happen. So besides the five pieces of equipment that are sitting over there in the grass here in front of the white barn, I think I've got somewhere close to 10 pieces of equipment sitting here and they do have a gravel area for them to park in, but some of them, I will not hardly use, you know, but every few years. I mean, that's the sad truth of it. Um, how often am I gonna use a three bottom plow? I may never use it again, but it goes with the Alice Chalmers tractor. And, um, you know, like the Cultipacker, I probably won't even use that unless I'm really disking something up and reseeding a bunch of grass. So it's probably only gonna get used when I reseed. So it's, you know, that may only be every several years. So it'd be nice to be able to take those pieces of equipment that I don't use very often and at least get them over there so they're not in the way next to this barn as well. So let's go ahead and decide which pieces of equipment I'll use the probably the least and we'll put those in the back first and then we'll probably try to uh, put the ones that are used the most in the front. So I've got all those pieces of equipment that I wanted to move. I've got them parked back here in our new area. And uh, I put the ones that I probably will never use again, I put in the very back. So that was that three bottom plow and that was a smaller disc. And uh, in front of that, I've got the bigger disc and the cultipacker. So that's probably something that we're only gonna use maybe every few years when we're doing some uh, reseeding or, or plowing up a field or something. So that's stuff that's probably not gonna be used very often. And uh, I created another little row right next to it and that's got the hay equipment. It's got the hay tether and the hay rake. And I think they're okay to be parked in front of each other because one's used right after the other. And then once the hay's bailed, I can park them back. So I think that'll work out pretty good. And then um, on this very, this left side over here, um, this left side's gonna end up being uh, where the carport's gonna go. So the carport's gonna go over here and I'm gonna try to move that as one big piece. So I gotta go get some bracing um, so that it stays together and doesn't bend up when I try to move it here. And uh, I gotta get some concrete anchors because I'm gonna anchor it to that concrete pad so that the, it'll you know, be strong in the wind. But uh, that's gonna be the next thing that's gonna be happening. I've done some measuring and everything. I've got a power line that goes from my transformer over to my meter. So it's a, it's a 120, 240 volt line. It's not high voltage, but I've got about, 
I don't know, I've got about three feet of clearance somewhere in there to be able to go under that power line and, and move the carport over here. So I think I'm good that, um, you know, that I can move it over here as one piece. We'll just have to wait and see how that turns out. So anyway, I think that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.